All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm so excited to be with you today at this great event, this Let's Unconference. And we are going to start talking about some awesome ways that we can use Quizlet in our social studies classroom. So my name is Bethany Petty. Um, this is my, I'm starting my 15th year teaching high school social studies next month, which seems really weird that August is already almost here. Um, I teach government and our dual credit social studies classes at our high school in Missouri. Um, I am also a blogger and an author. I've written two books on instructional technology and student choice. And um, I really just enjoy geeking out about all of the cool ways that we can use awesome tools like Quizlet in our classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And as we go through, please feel free to um, drop some questions in the chat. Um, yes, Jasmine, this can also be used for elementary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so as we get going, feel free to drop questions in the chat, um, in the Q&A, and I'll do my best to kind of answer them as we go through. I've also set aside about five minutes towards the end of our session Let's have as we go through. So let's get to it. The goal of our session today is we wanna be able to kind of get the best use uh, that we can out of Quizlet um, in our social studies classrooms. And I don't know about you guys, but I was talking earlier uh, prior to our session, but sometimes I feel like social studies gets pushed to the back burner. Um, sometimes it's almost like we are like language or ELA teachers who happen to like history. Um, so my goal today is to show you some specific ways that we as social studies teachers can use Quizlet and also some ways that we can use um, Checkpoint and Quizlet Live in a few different ways to increase engagement in our classrooms. All right. So our agenda today, we're going to start off by creating classes, then we're going to move into creating study sets, and then we're going to focus specifically on things you can use um, in Quizlet for your social studies classes, and then we're going to play a couple games um, to kind of get your social studies brains flowing uh, as we get ready to start the new school year. So I'm going to check the chat real quick before we move on. Yes, Go bell ringers for government ecology. Yes, Kim, you're going to love our station, Quizlet stations activities. Okay. Um, all right. Fantastic. So let's get to so the first thing, and guys, I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between our presentation and an actual Quizlet account because I feel like that's the, the best way to, um, going to be doing for your students. We're going to start off by creating a class. And when I first did, I did, I just wanted my kids to jump on, uh, make their some vocabulary and study and then move on. But creating the classes can be a really cool feature to use with your students. And it can also help you with managing and also ensuring engagement, okay? So I'm just gonna jump off of this screen really quickly. And we're gonna go to my Quizlet account. So I just went to Quizlet and of course joined, there we go. And here I am at my home page. And if you've used Quizlet before, you guys know what all of this looks like. So to get started with my class, I'm gonna jump up here and I'm gonna click create class. So now what I've got here is, is I can add my class name, I can add a brief description of it. Um, and then I've got a couple of boxes down here that we're going to look at. So what I've already done is I've created a Quizlet class specifically for the Quizlet Unconference. And there's a few different ways that you guys can join. Um, you see here that I've got my sets. I can go to members and I can share this with my students. I can copy the link and I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this in the chat. So if you guys um, want to join this class just to kind of see what's happening, then you can do that. I just dropped that in there. You should just be able to click on it. You might have to copy and paste it into a new tab. Um, and then over here, I've got a couple of other options. I can click copy. Um, I can jump up here and I can hit add members. 
and this is probably uh, this in my experience working with teachers, this part is really underused. So I want to make sure you know how to do this. You can invite your of course by sending their emails or their Quizlet usernames. Um, but to me, that seems a little bit cumbersome. So the way that I do it is I need to use Google Class as a management system. I just want you to know that that option is there. Okay. So now oh, I see a couple of things coming through. It says nothing to see. That's right. Uh, it should. Well, hold on. Let's try again. Let's try again. Here we go. Let's invite you. There we go. Copied. There we go. Okay. Now this should be the link, Jennifer. Now try it. Okay. So um, you can, like I said, you are able to add me by using what I want to do. Um, and then, okay, Meredith, it says my. They're saying my audio is lagging. And we'll see if we can get somebody to jump in there and fix that. All right. So now um, with mutation, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a study set. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Meredith. Okay. So now we're going to pop over to creating our study set. And this is one that uh, I'm sure we, we use this very frequently uh, in the classroom. So to create a study set, we're just going to pop up here to create and then click study set. So now this is where we can get into some kind of uh, social study specific options for your students. Okay, so we are going to start off. Start off. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to title this one uh, practice and you can add a description if you'd like to. I'm just going to leave that blank. But now we're going to come down here to where we can import from Word, Excel or from Google Docs. Now, my students have found this really, really beneficial, especially when they are working uh, with their vocabulary terms whenever they create their own decks because they just go and grab uh, the, the list of terms that I have shared with them, you know, in our curriculum, um, and then they can just paste it in here. So it's a really big time saver for our students. We also, another really cool thing that we can do, um, yes, Teresa, I will definitely do that for you. It should pop in there. Okay. And that should, there we go. Okay. I'm going to go to a new screen here. There we go. And you guys should be able to see my Quizlet screen. There we go. All right. So now, now that we've got our um, terms imported here from Word, um, we are going to jump down here. And instead of using a definition, we're going to use an image. Okay, so I'm just going to type in maybe we're looking at geography, maybe this is something, uh, maybe you're looking at the seven or the, um, maybe you're looking at continents of the world, and in your upper elementary grades. So I'm going to type North America, and then I'm going to go South America, and we're just going to stop there with that one. Okay, I'm going to pop over here to our definitions, and instead of using the definitions that pop up here for Quizlet, I'm going to jump over to our image option. So now you have two options here, which I really, really like. Um, and there we go. Thanks for that comment in there. Um, I, I clicked on North America. So now I'm searching all of these images or I can go and I can upload my own image. So whatever you want to do, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, I'm just going to click on this one because I like that image. Now we're going to go to South America. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click image and then I'm going to click on South America. Okay. And we can keep going from there. Let's go Africa and we'll do, whoops, there we go, Australia. 
and there we go, Asia, and Antarctica, and Europe. So now we've got our continents. Just gonna jump back over here and add my images. So I really like this feature, especially if you're doing something um, you know, with images where our students have to uh, identify something, like in this case, identify a continent. Uh, this is something that is really, really neat. Um, and it's really easy. Oops, let's do a different one for that one. It's really easy for us um, to, to do. Here we go. There we go. There we go. That's the one I wanted. Okay. And again, all of these are um, in Quizlet. I'm not uploading any of these. I'm just searching through to find one that is going to work best for me and my students. And oops. And there we go. All right. So now I've created my set and we're ready to go. So you'll notice that the next thing that pops up is I have the ability to share. Um, ooh, my audio is back. Fantastic. Um, now I have the ability to share this set that I made with my students. So now I've got a couple of different ways I can do this. If you want to send the, the link to your students directly, that's totally fine. You can add their email in there. Personally, I find it easier to share on Google Classroom, or if you're a Microsoft Teams user, you can click this button here and you can share it directly with them on Classroom. If you're a Remind user, I love Remind, you can also share it um, on Remind as well. If you would like to, you could also copy the link. And if you have some sort of program that will allow you to push those links directly to your students' devices, you can do that there. What we do wanna look at now is adding this to a class or a folder, okay? So this is a really cool way to be able to monitor your students as they study on your, um, your set that you share with them, okay? So I'm just gonna add this directly to our Quizlet Unconference class. And then to see that, I'm just gonna pop back over here to my classes. I'm gonna click it and I can see that I've got all of these awesome students in my class section and I've got a set, okay? So I can see that two of you have added um, some sets, which is fantastic. And we'll jump back and I'll show you how you can change that setting if you don't want your students to add sets. I'm just gonna pop over here to the practice set that we made and there we go. So now I can pop down here. I can see all of the images that we've added and we can start studying or your students can start studying, okay? So that is one way that we can use Quizlet uh, specifically for social studies classes by adding those images in um, into, uh, into those, those flashcard decks, okay? So popping back over here to um, our screen, there is one thing I wanna show you that I feel like we get a lot of, uh, I feel like it's a really overlooked feature. And that is whenever you are creating your flashcard deck, you can utilize these keyboard shortcuts. So like when I was going down here and entering my terms and entering the definitions, I could have done that a lot faster by using these keyboard shortcuts. So to add a card, and I'm on a Mac right now, I would use Command Shift R to, here we go. To go to the next card, I would just tab. To move a card up and down, I would hover over it and then hit my option and then up and down arrows. Uh, to upload an image, all of those are right here. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that feature. Again, when you're making a new study set, just hover over here on this little keyboard and that'll pop up the shortcuts that you can use just to make things go a little bit smoother um, on, your, um, on your creation process. So Jennifer, can you put input your own images? Yes, you can. So to do that, all we're gonna do is, let's say, we'll make, whoops, we'll make this one Bill of Rights. So to pop over here, I'm gonna click image and instead of just searching for whatever shows up here, I'm gonna click upload my own image. And then anything that I've got on my device, anything that I found and saved, um, I can upload that as part of 
um, a part of that that flashcard deck. So yes, you can definitely customize that um, to to fit the needs of your students. Okay. All right. So now we're going to pop back over here to home. And I'm going to jump back into our study set or our, our class here. Okay. So I see we've got world cultures, we've got market structures. That sounds fantastic. Um, I'm going to come up here to our members option. And then I'm going to come over here to my more, my three little dots up here in the corner. Okay. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to click edit. So now you should see on your screen this box that pops up and says edit class. So it, I've, I've noticed that all of you, a lot of you have been adding some really cool study sets, which is fantastic. Um, you can choose to allow your students to add their own study sets so that everyone can see in the class, or if you uncheck this box, they won't be able to add their own study sets, okay? So I just wanted to make, make you aware of that as well. Um, you can also allow class members to invite new members if you just want to kind of uh, lock it down to individual um, course sections or your individual school, then you can just uncheck that as well. Either way works, you know, it's just whatever, whatever you want your students to be working on. Okay. All right. So now we're going to pop back over here and I'm on slide eight. So if you guys are kind of following along here on the presentation, we want to look now at how we can use existing study sets. So if you're like me, you find yourself very, very busy, very, very often, and you might not need to reinvent the wheel every time you um, share a deck with your students. So I wanted to share with you, I'm going to move this little panel out of the way. There we go. I wanted to share with you a way that you can search for and find existing study sets by people um, that are uh, people that are trusted. Uh, you definitely want to see that uh, they are a teacher. Yes, guys, I'm going to drop that in the chat here as well. It's a direct link to our presentation. I have it on one of the slides, but um, I'll go ahead and share that with you now. It's bit.ly slash Quizlet hyphen petty, and that should bring you to my presentation. All right. So now I'm here on my dashboard and I'm looking at up here in the top where it says study sets, textbooks, questions, okay? So I use Quizlet um, in my school account. Okay, there, oh yes, definitely download that, uh, that user uh, guide as well. I am going to search for, oh, there we go. I'm gonna search for the account that I have created um, for my classroom, okay? So if you type in Mrs. underscore Petty, that's going to bring you to, and then click on users, sorry, that's going to bring you to me. And you'll notice right after that, right after my name, it says teacher, okay? That tells you that the person that you are going to be getting these um, flashcard decks from is an actual teacher and not someone just randomly who's just decides they're going to make a Quizlet deck, okay? That way you know that the information that you're getting is good and solid and reliable, okay? All right, Monica's got a question. Regarding the option for students to add and remove study sets, can a student only remove his or her own set? Uh, oh, and Meredith is going to answer that for us. Fantastic. Um, yeah, because we definitely don't want the, the students to be able to, um, to be able to remove sets that their teacher um, has has added, yes. Okay, so now I see all of the study sets that I have ever created, which is fantastic, right? So I'm going to pop over here and I'm just gonna click on, let's go to, let's find amendments. That's a really fun one. That's what, that's one of the things that we're going to, uh, we're going to explore here in a minute. So Mrs. Petty Amendment. There we go, constitutional amendments, and here we go, okay? So now that I have searched for this deck from Mrs. Petty's class, my class, uh, if I want to, I can go ahead and I can add this set to my folder. I can save this set and then edit it and add it to my specific class folder. So then it would be like I created it. 
Um, I can share this set with my students. So again, I can share this with someone via email. I can share it with a link, uh, with Classroom, Remind, or Microsoft Teams, whatever. Um, and then again, I have the ability to, um, I can print it if I want to, I can combine it with another uh, link. I've got all of those really cool different options, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add this set to our class. That way you guys will have access to it, okay? All right, so now we are going to switch gears and I wanna show you a way that you can um, kind of use Quizlet to increase uh, your, um, your, your personal excitement and um, maybe, maybe let your hair down a little bit with your students. So like I said, I am a high school teacher. Um, a few years ago, whenever, um, whenever the world went on lockdown, uh, March 13th, 2020, I feel like that's a date that will forever live in my mind, um, when my students went home and we didn't see that class again. One of the, the ways that I chose to kind of keep engagement up with my students was I decided I was going to make a TikTok account, okay? And now TikTok is all the rage and everybody knows what TikTok is. Uh, but in 2020, it was still kind of a brand new thing. So um, in one of my uh, email conversations with my students, they said, Mrs. Petty, you should put uh, some of your stuff on TikTok because that's where we are. And I was like, what do you mean put it on TikTok? And they said, put it on TikTok, make a TikTok. And I was like, okay, I don't have any idea what that means, but I downloaded TikTok um, and I started creating uh, content for my students on TikTok. Now I don't follow my students, um, but they can access my TikTok, of course, if it pops up on their For You page or whatever. Um, so one thing that we do in my class to make vocabulary a little more fun um, is if we come to a, a concept or an idea or a term or whatever that we just can't grasp, we just can't get a good handle on it, we stop and we make a song about it. And sometimes the songs are really, really, really bad. Uh, like my students say, the cringier, the better. Um, so I, I make it like to a nursery rhyme or something, or um, I sing and dance and act like a Looney Tune, as you can see here in this video. But um, Quizlet reached out to me and said, hey, would you want to make a Quizlet or make a TikTok and link a Quizlet deck to it? And I was like, wow, that sounds brilliant. So um, I did. So if you are on TikTok and you make videos for your students or you share videos or whatever, um, you have the ability to create a Quizlet link and add it to your, um, your TikTok, which is pretty cool. So if you're like me and you do videos, um, for uh, vocabulary or helping your students review for a test or whatever, and you put it on TikTok, uh, then you have the ability to add a link to a Quizlet flashcard deck. So uh, on our presentation here, I have given you uh, some screenshots uh, and some specific examples of how you can do that. So basically, once you make your video, you're gonna send, it's gonna take you to a post option. Um, then you can add a link and then this lovely box will pop up and you'll be able to search for, um, you, whoops, let's jump back there. You'll be able to search for a Quizlet link and then share that out with your students, okay? So if you are looking for a little bit of uh, inspiration or you just wanna get a really good laugh at Bethany Petty, uh, definitely follow me on TikTok because most of my videos there are social studies related. Um, it, one of the, the big ones that went viral, which I mean, you know, if you have students, high school students specifically, um, if something goes viral, that's a big deal, right? It was a rap that I made about Marbury v. Madison to help them remember what that landmark case was. Uh, this specific rap here that you're seeing uh, is about John Locke and what John Locke thought the power of government should be as opposed to Thomas Hobbes. Um, if you want to, there's, there's some really cool um, videos on YouTube helping students remember states and capitals or helping students remember uh, the names of the presidents or helping students remember, you know, all of those different things. So um, really, this is just one way that we can use pop culture, uh, to connect it to Quizlet, connect it to a really cool tool um, and increase that engagement with our students, okay? 
All right, I see a couple of things popping in. Oh yeah, Kim, the quirkier, the better. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you want to get a good laugh, you're not, check out the, the TikToks because um, every time we make a video with, <laughs> uh, with my students, um, I always share, I always send it to my husband. And um, he, he still, he just doesn't get how I can totally act a fool in my classroom um, and then put it on TikTok or put it on the internet or it just whatever. Um, and I always say sometime after having my, my youngest daughter, I lost all sense of shame. And I think my classroom has been better for it. So um, don't be afraid to get creative, let your hair down, have some fun with your students because after the past couple of years, um, uh, in, in the world of education, uh, we all need to smile, right? We all need to have, have some joy and have some excitement um, and happiness in our classroom because I don't have to tell you it's been a tough couple of years. All right, so we've already talked about um, how we can share our set. And now I'm just gonna answer a couple questions before we get into Quizlet Live and Checkpoint. Okay, and let's see, we've got a Q&A here. If we use Canvas instead of Google Classroom, does it work the same way? Excellent, excellent question. Um, it looks like Meredith is is popping in there, but um, I'll just say that if you can share that link instead of like adding on Google Classroom or Canvas, if you can just drop that link into Canvas, it'll work the same way. They'll still be able to access it, okay? All right, so let's play Quizlet Live. So now, um, I, and you guys know how Quizlet Live works. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, so I'm gonna put up a link or I'm gonna put up a join code uh, and we're going to, we're going to kind of, we're going to play it. We're going to see how it works. And I just want to give you a couple of ideas and tidbits as we go through. Uh, Bethany was not a cheerleader. I can promise you that Bethany was a volleyball player. And I also had major public speaking issues when I was in high school. You would never have thought that, right? Yeah. So um, no, definitely not a cheerleader, but the crazier, the better. That's for sure. Uh, anyway. So I'm gonna pop over here to our constitutional amendments deck that we just added. And you notice that we've got a few different options here. We've got classic live, we've got checkpoint. We can do self-study activities with flashcards, learn, test, and match. Uh, one of the, my favorite things to do specifically with this deck in my classroom is we play match, okay? And match is exactly what it sounds like. And I'm there's a lot of pressure right now. Okay, so I'm just going to match the amendment with the number, okay? And I'm normally a lot faster at this, so don't judge me. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so now my, oh, some of you guys already played, no fair. Uh, anyway, so now I can see that there's some leaderboards, right? That set, you betcha, it was amazing. Uh, I can see the leaderboard. So every single person that played that deck and did match on it um, is going to pop up on that leaderboard. So uh, I typically will get on and I'll, um, I'll kind of set the bar uh, for, for the match on that set. And then my students love to get in there and try to beat me. And that's totally fine because what are they doing? They're making connections between uh, terms and definitions. So I'm like, okay, you, you get on there and you keep going. Uh, you, you try to beat me and learn and review content at the same time. They don't need to know that. Okay. There we go. All right. So now there we go. Where do you go to learn Quizlet? Some site. Um, so Raymond, are you talking about like learn how to use it? Because if so, um, that link that Meredith dropped in the chat to that, that PDF, that specific guide for teachers using Quizlet, that is the place to go because that is, um, that, that's gonna be super, super helpful uh, for figuring out how the best way that you can just like use Quizlet in your classroom, yes. All right, so we are going to play Classic Live. Now there are so many of you in this group and I'm so excited. So uh, we're all probably not gonna get in but that's okay. And um, <laughs> I see some stuff coming through on the chat. Yes. Uh, so here's how I do Quizlet Live in my classroom. Uh, you do have the option to randomize your teams or you can play individual. So personally in my classroom, the individual works best for us. Um, and it's not because I don't want my students working in groups, not that's totally fine. 
Uh, but with individual, we can still get into group type activities. And I'll show you how here in just a minute. And obviously in our setting right now, individual is gonna be best, okay? So how do we wanna play? Do I wanna give you the definition and have you pick the term? Or do I wanna give you the term and have you pick the definition? We're gonna go the more challenging route because we're, we're all teachers here, it'll be fine, okay? All right, so if you wanna play along, I want you guys to go to quizlet.live and type in this code. Or if you are a QR code person, you might be able to just scan the code uh, depending on the glare that you see and make sure I get my mouse out of the way, okay? All right, so I see four people, five people. I'm gonna give you guys about 30 more seconds to jump in and then we're gonna play. So while we are uh, doing this in my classroom, this is where I'm walking around, I'm making sure that everyone has access to Quizlet, I'm making sure that everybody's on the right page, uh, making sure that everybody remembers what we're doing, making sure that I've got their devices out. Uh, so it, it, that's that's just how we're doing or how I'm managing when my students are jumping in here, okay? So another thing, and I think this is a relatively new feature, we can copy the game link and we can share it directly with our students. So this is gonna be something that if you have, especially like upper elementary grades or even lower elementary grades, um, and they can't follow uh, those multi-step uh, instructions really easily, um, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and create our game. Uh, that's going to be an easy way for them to maybe go to classroom or go to canvas or go to teams or whatever and click the button and then jump into uh, jump into your game okay all right so we've got all of the people here with there we go all of our fun animals we're going to start the game okay so now on your screen you're going to see the number if you see a number that's the constitutional amendment okay and then you're going to see uh, some definitions, okay? And as I'm scrolling down, oh my goodness, look at you guys. You're rolling, that's okay. Uh, uh huh. And one of my favorite things, and I say this over and over and over again, anytime I introduce Quizlet Live to, to teachers is this is a mastery learning type of activity, right? You can't just get one right. And then if you get one wrong, then you just keep going, right? We want you to get them all right. We want you to know all of them. And if you've played Quizlet Live before, you've probably seen students get all the way to um, 11 or to get all the way to 10. And then you, all of a sudden you hear, <gasps> and they flop all the way back down uh, to zero, but that's fine. That's totally fine. Okay. All right. Yes. Oops. There we go. Oops. Uh, no, it's okay. We don't want to do that. Oh, my Lanta. Uh, the pandas, Kristen, big winner, Kristen, you must be a government teacher, uh, <laughs> followed by the alpacas and the dolphins. This is super awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click continue to stats because I want to show you guys what this is going to, this pops up. And I absolutely love going over this part with my students. It's, it's fantastic. What we learned. So we know that the 20th amendment, shortened time between election and inauguration, and the 23rd amendment gave um, electoral votes to Washington, D.C. So that tells me that you guys, a lot of you initially confused those two amendments. So then as a teacher, maybe I'm going to go back and say, okay, uh, we probably need to maybe refresh that. Okay, again, 19 and 14, those were initially confused terms. Totally, totally fine. Okay, so I get some really good data. What we should study, ooh, we should study the 20th and the 23rd because that those two must have been really, really, really tricky. And that's totally fine, totally fine, okay? So now we can play again or we can play with a new set. So now we're gonna click leave and we're gonna jump back. Yes, I did like that. We're gonna jump back and we're gonna look at checkpoint, okay? And checkpoint is, is a pretty new feature. And I, I really, really like this, especially for formative assessment. Uh, so for me personally, we use Quizlet um, probably, I would say twice a week at least in my classroom, okay? But sometimes it's really nice to be able to have an entire set of vocabulary words ready to go, but maybe we've only gotten through seven or eight of those terms. And I don't want them to, to just guess their way through because guessing gives teachers really bad data, right? So maybe we've only talked about one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Maybe we've only talked about the Bill of Rights. You have to choose at least um, half of the terms here, okay? So I've chosen my first 10. 
And now I'm going to hit continue. Okay. So now, same thing. This is just like a Quizlet Live where you can still join. Uh, it, this time, you've got C6DA45. Again, same thing. We can go ahead and scan the code there. So if you guys can pop on in. And I want to show you some options as soon as we get a lot of people in here, okay? So those of you that are um, jumping in, have have we done a lot with um, with Checkpoint? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Desiree, mine do too. Some of them freak out when they have to start over. Yeah. Okay. First time, haven't used Checkpoint. That's totally fine. So Kristen, you, you teach US history, fifth grade US history. Fantastic. Okay. All right. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start game. And there we go. Okay. Question one of 10. Uh, right to a speedy trial lawyer. I can see up here that 13, 14, 17, ooh, 18. Oh my goodness. They keep coming. They keep coming. We're almost there. We're almost there. Almost done. Four, three, two, one. Okay. Now we move on to the, the screen where we can see the data. Okay. So I can see that 12 of my students who had joined um, got that right. Now, if you look up here, I see this new join request. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And I'm going to approve. I'm going to allow Christopher to join us. Okay. And that's one of the things, one of the options that you have in Checkpoint is that you can jump in and say, I want to allow my students to still be able to join um, after, the, um, after the game has already started. So sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes you have a student whose Chromebook dies or their internet connection drops or whatever, and you still want them to be able to join the game after you've already started, okay? So again, freedom from cruel and unusual punishment, Fantastic. And we move on. Okay. Right to trial by jury. Let's see if you can get that one. Okay. All right. Doing great. I can see that I've got 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, almost faster, faster. Ah! Okay. Three, two, one. Arrgh. Fantastic. So now I can see again, right to trial by jury. 12 of you guys got that right. Um, so that is probably something that we want to revisit before we move on to our next thing, okay? So that's just a real quick overview of how Checkpoint works. Um, and I do want to show you one quick thing here. If I were to, let's go ahead and check these again. Um, if I were to, to launch that game, if I come up here to options, I get to kind of determine how you guys are going to answer this. Are you going to answer with the term or the definition? Whatever you want to do. Do I want to turn on the leaderboard? Sure. Do I want to allow my students to join late? Yes. Okay. So that's where that option is, uh, just so you know that. Okay. All right. Let's answer some questions here in the chat. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Definitely. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we're going to jump off of Checkpoint and we're going to jump back over to our presentation. And I want to share a couple of different ideas, uh, a couple of different ways that we use Quizlet in my classroom. Uh, because sometimes no matter how uh, awesome the tool is, if you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, it can kind of be stale for students and teachers. And we want to make sure that we are increasing that engagement and keeping those kids hooked on uh, learning. Okay. So one way that we use Quizlet uh, in my classroom is we play Quizlet stations. Okay. So again, I teach high school social studies. Uh, sometimes station work in the high school classroom kind of gets a bad reputation because um, the students just don't really like it. Uh, I found that Quizlet review stations are fantastic. Okay, so here's how it works. Uh, we have different stations around the classroom. So maybe I've got a, um, a table uh, in the front that's going to play um, amendments. A table in the back is going to play uh, bill, the Bill of Rights or whatever. Um, you can launch a a classroom, or you can launch a, a Quizlet Live on a device at each station. And as students get to those stations, then they can join the game and they can play that, okay? So maybe you have your students working in groups of three or four, whatever. Um, you use the individual option in Quizlet 
live and then you have them join as they're walking around. The Quizlet relay races, this is super duper fun. Uh, this is another example of how you can create um, that group, that collaborative group setting with using the, uh, the individual option on Quizlet Live. So my students will, uh, I'll put them in groups and I'll say, okay, you need to designate one person as the leader. Uh, that leader is going to be the person whose Chromebook or whose iPad or whatever is being used, okay? So then each uh, leader has their, their device set up and then we launch the game. So each person has to answer one question. Whenever they answer the question, it gets, they go to the back of the line, okay? So sometimes, you know, depending on what where you are in the year, it might be nice to do, uh, they stand up and do it in a line, maybe they sit down and they pass the Chromebook around, whatever. Uh, it's just another way that we can use Quizlet. And instead of doing the teams on Quizlet Live, uh, the individual, this relay race, is really going to ensure that every student is participating. Because sometimes uh, if you're in a, a, a Quizlet Live situation, you might have one person who kind of takes over. Uh, and, and I know you guys have probably seen that happen, takes over and answers all the questions, right? So if you are doing these relay races, same type of group environment, um, but you ensure everyone is participating, okay? And another fun one that we did last year towards the end of the year is Quizlet Family Feud. I mean, if you're like me, you love watching Family Feud. It's just, sometimes it's just absolutely, you know, a riot to watch. So um, here's how we do this. Again, kind of like with the relay races, we have each team designate their family leader. And that person is the one that solicits the, the answers from their teammates, okay? But they're the only one that can push the button. OK, so as um, as the, the definition pops up and the term options pop up, that one leader is saying, OK, we've got uh, the Bill of Rights. Is that the first 10 amendments? Is that blah, 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 blah. OK, and then as they're soliciting advice, then the the group leader or the family leader is going to make their selection. Everybody does the good answer clap uh, and then the answers are submitted. OK. So super, super fun way, again, still using Quizlet Live. Um, as the teacher, you're still getting that valuable data, that great feedback from your students, but it's just in a different way, okay? So with that, guys, I'm gonna leave you with my, um, my information and I'm gonna open up the, the Q&A in the chat and just kind of um, see what questions you have for me. Okay, checking, let's see. Um, there we go. I've done relay races with six to eight. They love it, absolutely great ideas. Thank you, Desiree. I don't remember hearing this. Do we receive PD for attending today? That's a Meredith question. Love these options. Oh, thank you so much. Um, there we go, very helpful, great session. Thank you, Kristen. And our Q&A, can you use a diagram they need to label? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's in that first option. Um, it's going to be, they're not gonna, going to be able to actually like physically label it, but it will help them like connect. Uh, for example, if you were doing countries of Europe, uh, then they'll be able to like hover over one and they'll be able to connect. Uh, okay, this is Spain. This is Portugal. Okay. Uh, what game version, Checkpoint, Quizlet Live, et cetera, do you use for Family Feud? So for either one, it's going to work well. So the whole point really of Checkpoint is that you aren't going to be using um, all of the terms in a deck. So um, if you wanted to use Checkpoint, you could. You could definitely use that. Um, or you could just do a, a traditional Quizlet Live. Either way uh, is, is going to, to work for that. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, all right. So if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. If there's any um, ideas you wanna kind of bounce around. Um, I love helping teachers. I love working with teachers. I love learning from teachers. Um, so please feel free to contact me. You have all my information here. Um, also, here's another link to the Quizlet deck uh, from today, or the flashcard, the presentation deck. There it is from today. It's just bit.ly slash Quizlet hyphen petty. Okay. So thank you guys so much.